For those of you unfamiliar with this shape, what you're looking at is the outline of a ranger tab, and this one will make you smile. We've got the enhanced ELC carbine from Ranger Proof Arms, a true purpose-built, every part selected for a reason, fighting carbine. Coming up next on GB Guns. familiar with the US military structure or maybe misled by what you see in movies the Rangers are the badasses <laughs> the Rangers are the ones that have extra training to go extra far with minimal equipment and support and go destroy things when they absolutely need destroying yes there's special forces yes there's Delta yes the Marines have some special operations of their own uh, but the Army Rangers are really the ones that uh, they go on the tough stuff so this rifle is built to the specs and with the intent of a ranger and special forces veteran himself all parts chosen and put together now let's face it air 15s are really only manufactured by a few companies and everyone else just kind of assembles so having a purpose-built selection like this uh, is pretty neat and normally what I do on these unboxing or tabletops is look over the rifle and point out things that I see. There is so much going on with this rifle that I'm going to have to uh, read from a spec sheet for you for the first time in a while. Uh, mostly because I don't even recognize everything that's in here. I just know that it feels awesome in the hand. We'll go over those first touch impressions though. PWS arms, or primary weapon systems, brake, and flash dissipator. We've got a stainless steel 223 wild barrel. Now 223 wild gives you the strength of 556 with the precision of 223. It's uh, slowly catching on. It's nice to see one in stainless on here. The handguard diameter, you can see by the way my hand fits it, is great for that forward grab. Now, of course, I'm still a magwell holder. I never cut on the C-clamp thing or anything like that. But if you wanted to just hold, this diameter, at least in my hands, fits just about perfect. Coming back and looking at the gap as to where the, how that handguard lines up with the receiver, just about perfect, meaning if you ran iron sights, you wouldn't have too much of a shift. We can see the bolt is a little different. Nice extended magazine release. Trigger's different, a short throw safety. That is ambidextrous. Ergo grip, B5 stock, and this has a Shepard scope on it. This is a package that is not yet on the Ranger Proof Arms website. This is sort of the first release of it, if you will. Let's break this rifle down and go over what makes it so special. This rifle is very deliberate. And uh, that excites me about it. It's kind of fun to see what someone with the experience that uh, the folks at Ranger Proof have choose for a rifle. This is sort of be the, the dream fighting rifle, if you will. Starting the back, we have a B5 system stock, which has rubber pad, quick, quick uh, sling attachment points, cheek rests, lock and locks down here which can be annoying for bench shooting, but this is not a bench shooting rifle. Primary weapon systems tube, which is strengthened by these indentations here, and their ratcheting system back here, which means you don't have to stake. Everything locks in nice and tight. Riding in the buffer tube is a spring coat, chrome silicone carbine buffer spring to give longer life, and a primary weapon system H2 buffer very high quality as all PWS Arms products are. Now you might notice on the receiver how even the finish is. That's because these receivers, which are 7075 forgings heat treated to T6, are all hand deburred and polished, not for shining of course, but removing edges before uh, being tumbled, tumbled and then sent off for the mil spec anodizing. Interesting little note. If you look down in here, 
the boss for the bolt catch is tapped and threaded and screw held in place. No roll pin to worry about popping out there. See, so there's nothing on that end. They do the same thing for the spring that keeps the detent in place. The receiver is notched to allow this 45 degree battle arms development short throw safety, which is very quick. They also drill and tap and insert a small piece for tensioning to take any residual slop out. You see that little piece of Delron in there? That is a contact point to keep the upper and lower extra snug together. We can see we've got anti-walk trigger pins. The trigger, flat bow trigger, which is rather visually impressive, is a CMC trigger. The flat bow gives you a little more leverage, which makes the three and a half pound pull feel all the smoother. Got the extended magazine release here, which pushes nicely. One thing that I noticed right off the bat is with this trigger guard here, you can tell a man who's been on patrol designed this because it's lacking that gap or edge that cuts on the knuckle. Through Afghanistan and Iraq, carrying a rifle with your hand like that for long periods of time, you end up with uh, calluses right there as that grinds on you. Doesn't happen with this rifle. Ergo grip. These rifles, by the way, are 100% US made. Every part that's in it was made in the US. They don't buy lower parts kits. Every piece is specced. Every spring is from Spring Co., etc. This is American Strong. The 16 inch 416R stainless steel barrel is chambered in 223 Wild and is using an intermediate length gas system with a low profile gas block there. 223 Wild, as I mentioned earlier, offers a variety of advantages and is slowly catching on. These guys are just a little ahead of the game. Now, the handguard is 15 and a half inches long, which is three inches longer than the non-enhanced model. Let's you really reach your arm out there for the people who like to do that front end grasping. Unless it gives you three more inches of places to mount things if need be and protects the barrel a little better. Uh, this is in key mod, of course. They also have M lock coming soon for those of you that are fans of the Magpul systems. The Ranger proof charging handle, slightly broadened and squared at the edges with this nice extended catch that has very grippy serrations to it, as you can see there. The bolt itself is its own engineering feat. We'll get into what all's in that. So the carrier itself is made of case hardened 8620 steel and you might notice that it has some slightly different geometry. I'll try to uh, get the light to hit on it. This geometry is intended to reduce the tilt and cant that happens. The bolt's also slightly heavier to increase dwell time and ensure proper pressure. And you might have noticed too that the bearing surfaces are reduced. You see that space there? Less of it than on a standard mil spec bolt you go pull one out of your rifle at home. And the reason for that is it reduces the friction points which helps increase cycling. I would venture to guess as well that those gaps might help some of the junk escape so that future cycling works well. Our key of course is most certainly properly staked. You can see the staking there cuts into the screw. That's what keeps them from turning, not just having simple lines on there. Now this, of course, all has a black nitride coating on it. Mill spec firing pin. Pull the 4340 hardened cam pin out. See the coating on it. The bolt itself, CNC machined so that this collar here, which is where carbon loves to build up if you've spent much time shooting, is easier to clean. And we do have the O-ring buffer underneath the extractor right there, which was one major improvement that uh, unfortunately the Army realized well after I was done dealing with their stuff. So all in all, very well, very purpose-built rifle. I mean, each piece... Even the extractor is specced out at 4340 steel, magnesium uh, phosphate coated, and uh, magnetic particle inspected. If 
you're not familiar with that process, the MPI process involves uh, magnetizing the item to be to be inspected. Then you spray some magnetic particles onto it, and where things stick extra is where there are any cracks or malformities in the uh, metal itself. So to put that level of detail into the extractor tells me that the extractor is probably going to outlast my shoulder and finger in shooting this thing. Tell me what your thoughts are and uh, if you've ever seen a rifle built like this, pricing, you'll have to wait until they get all this together. I can tell you this is not a budget firearm, but this is probably going to be one of those rifles you cry once, buy once, and have it forever. We'll get it out to the range as soon as we can and uh, look forward to seeing you out there.